In today's video, we are going to be pitting ChatGPT against Anthropic's Claude and seeing which one comes out on top for writing, and it might not be the one you think. Hello, welcome back to The Nerdy Novelist, everybody. I am Jason, and I am here with a new microphone, which I'm really excited about, and hopefully get a little bit better audio quality here. But today we're going to be testing the capabilities of a new, well, newer to a lot of people writing a program called Claude. And Claude is a program created by a company called Anthropic, which is a competitor to OpenAI. And Claude is actually very similar to ChatGPT. It's another chat-based interface, but it's not as widely used or well-known by the general public. And yet it's actually been making a lot of waves in the author community because of its ability to aid authors in various writing techniques. So we're going to be testing the two against each other to see which one comes out on top. And I hope you enjoy. So first off, if you don't know what Claude is or don't know how to get it, if you go to anthropic.com slash Claude dash in dash Slack, I'll have a link to that below. Uh, you can add this to Slack. Now, this is another thing, another reason why this might not be as easily accessible to some people uh, because it requires a little bit more of, uh, of technical abilities than ChatGPT. But it's actually fairly simple. Uh, if you already have Slack, go ahead. Uh, if you don't have Slack, go ahead and download that and get that running on your machine. And then you can come here and say add to Slack. It'll pull up this thing. You can say allow and it'll add it to your Slack and you can access it from there. Currently, Claude is 100% free. I doubt it will remain that way for a while because these language models tend to be very expensive, but there you go, currently free. So um, at the very least, I can say this is gonna be a very good free alternative to something like ChatGPT Plus or PseudoWrite or any of those others. Anyway, so you get that from here. I'll have, a, again, the link in the description. Uh, I've already got it set up on my Slack account here. So we're going to go ahead and find a prompt and do it twice. We're going to do the exact same prompt in ChatGPT as well as in Claude. So to do that, let's go ahead and pull up the trusting prompt engineering prompt book that I've assembled. And again, if you haven't heard about this, you can get this at my website. That's nerdynovelist.com. Just go there, pick it up, uh, enter your email address, and you can get all of these prompts and I'm constantly up updating this and actually I'll be sending out an update to the list pretty soon. So there will be more here that you'll get over time. Anyway, um, so we're going to take this brainstorming prompt here, which is give me a number. We'll just say 10 to keep it simple. High concept pitches for a best selling. And we've done a lot of fantasy so far. So let's just say billionaire who I can't spell can't spell romances romance for a best-selling billionaire romance story with a unique twist intriguing characters and gripping emotional stakes and we'll hit enter and see what that gives us now we are using GPT-4 for this which is only available through chat GPT plus but that is the one I recommend for most things and sometimes when I give it a larger number of 10, 20, 30, it will give me less detail. But since I only told it to give me 10, it's giving me a little bit more detail here on uh, these prompts. But let's go ahead and read a few of these. Echoes of Fortune, a self-made billionaire tech genius obsessed with time travel. Okay, that went somewhere I wasn't planning on going. Uh, unexpectedly falls in love with a historian. In an effort to impress her, he accidentally sends them both back to the Victorian era. Now they must navigate societal norms, their burgeoning love, and a race against time to get back to the future. That's kind of a fun time travel romance, I guess. That's not unheard of, but not really what we're ex expecting for a billionaire romance. We have this one, Invisible Empire. A reclusive billionaire who secretly possesses the ability to become invisible falls in love with a private detective hired to find him. Their relationship de deepens as she unravels the truth, threatening to expose a secret and endanger their love. Again, I'm not really asking for a supernatural element here. I'm not sure what it's thinking. Maybe it took my 
uh, prompt to give it a unique twist a little too literally. But let's read one more. Billionaire's Refuge. After a scandal threatens his empire, a disgraced billionaire retreats to a remote island where he meets an environmental activist. As they work together to preserve the island's ecosystem, they fall in love, but their past threatened to tear them apart. Okay, that's a little bit more normal from what I would expect from a billionaire romance. And by the way, if, if you are a billionaire romance author, I apologize because I do not know the genre super well. So some of you might be saying, like, that's a terrible idea or that's been done a million times. I don't know. But you get an idea of what these are like, okay? Let's go ahead and take this exact same prompt, not change a thing. And we're going, we're going to go into Claude, type this in here, and see what it gives me gives us here are 10 high concept pitches for billionaire romance stories with unique twists and here we go an extremely ambitious tech ceo known for his cold ruthlessness finds his world turned upside down when he is forced to spend christmas under the same roof as his estranged young daughter can they find a way to reconnect before it's too late well, it's not really a romance it's more of a like a hallmark movie about finding uh, you know getting on better grounds with their children but this sounds a little bit more like what i would expect from a romance except there's no romance in it uh, a gifted young architect is hired to design an extravagant private island retreat for an eccentric billionaire unaware that he is the same man that has a passionate that she had a passionate fling with years before passions reignite but will the truth about their connection threaten everything that's actually pretty good i like that one um sounds about right for the genre a fiery young lawyer takes a job at a prestigious london firm only to discover that the firm's most important climate client is the same glamorous saudi prince she had a temp tempestuous relationship with during her wild college days the prince is determined to win her back but she is fiercely guarding her heart um so these actually look pretty good and they seem a little bit more like they know what we're asking for if that makes sense. It know it knows that we are looking to write a book about a billionaire romance. And it's giving us options that seem a little bit more genre appropriate. That first one was a little off because it didn't really mention anything about a romantic interest. Just had the CE you know, the rich CEO and his daughter. Uh, which could be a fine subplot, I suppose, but um, not really the main thing, but it's better than having a billionaire that turns invisible or knows time travel, right? It seems it's a, a little bit more spot on. So I'm giving this one to Claude. It seems pretty good here. Let's go back to chat GPT and let me zoom in here. We'll start a new chat. Uh, so let's talk about marketing. Uh, there are a couple of different things that we can do for marketing. Um, let's just start out with the basic form of copywriting that authors use and that is a book description so i'm just going to write write a book description for a well let's just keep going with the billionaire romance book and i am not going to give it anything more than that i'm just going to leave it pretty open-ended to see what it comes up with Diamantine Desires, a billionaire romance. In the high stakes world of opulence and corporate power, Diamant, I think that's, I don't actually know how to pronounce that, unveils an intoxicating tale of love, betrayal, and undeniable passion. Sophia Bennett, a hardworking, self made entrepreneur, has clawed her way from humble beginnings to the helm of a thriving fashion empire. Independent, resilient, and fiercely dedicated to her work, she has no room for romance, especially not with the kind of men she often crosses paths with in the world of high fashion and business but everything changes when she meets alexander sterling the enigmatic billionaire owner of sterling enterprises known for his ruthless business tactics cold demeanor and a heart as hard as the diamonds that he trades alexander is the epitome of everything sophia has vowed to avoid when a business deal thrusts them together their worlds collide in a fury of sparks and tension sophia finds herself drawn to the enigma that is alexander while he finds himself enchanted by sophia's tenacity and strength so different from the socia socialites he is accustomed to as they navigate the treacherous waters of corporate politics family pressures and their own tumultuous hearts they discover that they might just be what the other needs but the dark secrets lurking in alexander's past 
threatened to shatter their burgeoning romance. Diamantine Desires is a riveting journey of love and ambition set against the glittering backdrop of wealth and power. It's a tale that explores the depths of the human heart and the lengths one is willing to go for love. Can tr- love truly conquer all, even in the heart of a hardened billionaire? Author, and I'm <laughs> making up an author name here, Maria Laurent, expertly re- weaves a captivating narrative filled with intrigue, passion, and the transformative power of love. This novel will leave you breathless, reminding readers that love can find a way, um, even amidst the sparkling towers of the ultra-rich. So this is actually a pretty good book description, I would say. It follows a lot of the best practices when it comes to a book description. The only thing it kind of lacks is a really good hook at the beginning, but I found that ChatGPT isn't really that good at hooks. Um, but, it, you know, it, it it's definitely created in a marketing sense. Like, it, it is... You can tell it's been trained on probably thousands of book descriptions and it knows what to look for there and how to structure it. Uh, You'll see things like this boilerplate here at the end. You'll see that on a lot of book descriptions and a lot of books telling you about how to write a good book description. And so it's doing its job here. It's doing it well. Uh, And so I, you know, I don't think I would normally be opposed to this, but let's go ahead and look at Claude with the very same prompt and I'm going to do what's called a reset here, which means that Claude will forget everything that it just uh, listed um, so we can start fresh. That's another thing to know about Claude. You need to be copying and pasting everything out of it that you want to preserve because otherwise it might just get lost in a whole lot of uh, chat history. So let's go ahead and paste this exact same prompt, write a book description for a billionaire romance book, and hit enter and see what it gives us. All right. Billionaire CEO Jackson Stone has it all except the woman of his dreams. When he meets struggling charity worker Emily Clark, pretty sure that's a real person, there's an instant spark. But how can a down-to-earth girl like Emily ever hope to fit into his ultra-glamorous lifestyle? Emily has always dedicated herself to helping those less fortunate. She doesn't have time for arrogant player boys like Jackson, no matter how charming or handsome they may be. But she soon discovers there's more to Jackson than his riches. Behind his powerful persona is a man with a secret passion for philanthropy and a desire to find meaning in his life beyond his wealth. As Emily and Jackson work together, their attraction grows into a -a once-in-a-lifetime love, but can Emily open her heart to a man who lives in a world so different from her own? And will the revelation of Jackson's closely guarded secrets threaten the new bond between them? Jackson and Emily must overcome pain from their past and challenge the assumptions of others to embrace a love more precious than gold. In the end, they discover that true wealth lies in each other's arms. A heartfelt, emotional tale of passion, secrets, and love against the odds. Two souls from opposite sides of the spectrum come together in a romance for the ages. Okay, again, not that bad. Uh, In fact, I would say it's almost a little tighter than what ChatGPT gave us. Although ChatGPT did give us, I think, a little bit more of a thorough book description. So they're both good in their own ways. Both of the descriptions that they gave us were very generic billionaire romance. Like there's nothing really that sets it apart. But that's because I didn't really give it any prompt to set itself apart and do anything unique. And so I, I'm not expecting it to give me anything less than the, the most generic option. But it's done a really good job here. And I'm happy with both of these. So I think I would... I don't really, I don't think I can pick a winner on this one. Uh, I would just give it to both of them, honestly. Uh, They both did an excellent job of book descriptions. So next on our list, we're going to search for some headlines. Um, Now, headlines, uh, these are the kind of things that you might want to put on at the very beginning of your book description, something to really hook the reader in and get them interested. Or you can put them in things like Facebook ads, Amazon ads as a way of hooking people, getting them interested in your book. And so I don't really have a set prompt for this, but let's just do something like, first of all, we need this to be GPT-4. Let's just do write a series of 10 headlines for a billionaire romance book make sure they are 
and let's say really good hooks that grab the attention of the reader. I'm going to say good and clever hooks. All right, let's see what ChatGPT gives us. We want 10 headlines. Beneath Silk Sheik's The Billionaire's Secret Love Affair. Ooh, went somewhere else with this. Priceless passion when a billionaire bets on love. Trapped in luxury, a billionaire's captivating heart. Diamonds and desires, the heiress who stole the billionaire's heart, bound by fortune. So you'll see already, these are not very good. Um, these are not the kind of thing, they're highly generic. They're not really going to get you interested in the book we're trying to write here. They're just, they, they almost don't even tell you what the book's about. Some of them have a little bit of that in it, um, like beneath silk sheets. You get an idea what's happening there, but they're all very generic. They're all very much in the same vein. So let's go ahead and give this prompt to Claude and see how it does. Oh, first we want to reset. So it forgets our history and then paste in the prompt and let it go. All right, here's a series of 10 headline hooks for billionaire romance in the novel. His billions couldn't buy her heart until now. She stole his secret bank info and his heart. The CEO's forbidden temptation, his private island, her wildest dreams. Merging fortunes and merging hearts. Boardroom by day, playroom by night. Oh, gosh. Taking over his company, taking over his world, closing the deal of a lifetime with her. His millions couldn't impress her at first. Trading stocks by day, trading kisses by night. As you can already tell, these are way better than what ChatGPT was giving us. I would say they're not perfect. You would still need to run this back and forth and maybe try a few different things. Maybe give it some frameworks to work with. But... Using this just very simple generic prompt, Claude absolutely outperformed ChatGPT on this specific task. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought that was pretty good. So moving on, we'll do one last thing. We'll bring up the prompt sheet here and we're gonna actually write some words from the prompt sheet. Now my uh, regular prompt for chat GPT when I'm writing prose, goes something like this. It says, write a thousand words of a chapter using the following details. Genre, billionaire, romance, tone, we'll just say light and um, uh, comedic, point of view, uh, let's just make up our pr protagonist, Maria, first person, POV, um, and what else? Yeah, we can leave it at that setting uh, in a coffee shop, key characters, Maria. And we'll just say George um, is a, let's see, what was the one we got earlier from Claude? Let's go ahead and take that. Um, a struggling charity worker. Let's go ahead and try that again. Struggling charity worker, George is a billionaire stopping by in the uh, coffee shop. I would normally give it a lot more detail than this, but we're a little pressed for time. So the summary of the scene, this is the meat cute of the of this billionaire romance novel. George walks in and finds and bumps into Maria. And Maria spills 
her coffee on him. Again, I'm just being very generic here. And again, forgive me, billionaire romance authors. Uh, this is not my genre. So spills her coffee on him. They get to talking and we'll just leave it at that. Conflict. Um, there is conflict because Maria spilled her coffee on George, which doesn't leave a good impression. All right. And then, of course, we add this little bit at the end. Make sure to have plenty of realistic dialogue. Be sure to show, don't tell. Use deep point of view. Another thing I add here, I'm going to have to add to the prompt is avoid mushy dialogue and descriptions because I find that uh, ChatGPT is pretty bad with that. And that's it. So we'll let that go and see how ChatGPT does. I was elbow deep in paperwork. My eyes scanning a sea of financial reports for the charity I was working on. I had retreated to my sanctuary, a corner in the bustling coffee shop, where I could drown out the rest of the world with the soft chatter and the gentle hiss of the espresso machine. Just as I was about to take a well-deserved sip from my caramel macchiato. I don't drink coffee, guys, so forgive my pronunciation. Uh, a man with the stride of someone who owned the world collided with me. My coffee wants a sweet liquid ambrosia. Uh, this is why I tell it to avoid mushy descriptions. Transformed into a weapon of mass destruction. Oh, gosh. Splashing all over the front of his crisp, suspiciously expensive-looking suit. Oh, no, I'm so sorry, I gasped, gra scrambling for napkins to help him clean up the mess. I mean... The spilling spilling coffee on strangers wasn't my usually usual way of making friends. All right, so this isn't too bad. Uh, in fact, this is actually pretty good, um, given what I gave it. Um, if we wanted to do this for real, you'd want to give it a lot more in this summary section up here, so that it had a lot more specifics to go on. Because otherwise, it's just going to stay rather general. You can see it's still going; it's doing pretty well. Uh, it's got some good dialogue going on here. Yeah. Uh, so that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and take the same advanced prompt. Now, first of all, I, s I tell it to give me a thousand words, but it's not always going to give me that. Uh, in fact, I found ChatGPT usually only gives you about 600 with uh, the way it's currently at. But let's go ahead and take this to Claude and see what it gives me. So write a thousand words of the chapter, same prompt, everything the same. Another day, another dollar, or lack thereof. As head of the local animal sh shelter, my salary was more comparable to a pauper than a princess, not that I cared about money. My work was about the animals, not the paycheck. I stopped by the coffee shop on the way to work, hoping the triple espresso would give me the energy to make it through the stacks of paperwork waiting on my desk. The line was long, as usual, but moved fast. As I waited for my drink, I checked my phone for any messages from potential adopters or volunteers. Nothing so far. I sighed, placing my phone back in my pocket just as the barista called out, triple espresso for Maria. I hurried over, reaching for the drink at the same time as another customer. Our hands bumped, and in one horrible instance, I watched in stunned silence as my espresso tumbled end over end, the lid popping off as the scalding liquid soaked the man from head to toe. <laughs> Realistic, right? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I gasped. The the man frowned down at himself, his tailored gray suit now stained dark brown, his droplets of espresso pooled at his feet. And when he finally looked up at me for a second, I forgot how to breathe. He had sharp, aristocratic features, icy blue eyes, and thick chestnut hair that looked expensively styled, even though it was currently drip, dripping with espresso. Everything about him screamed money and privilege, and I had just doused him in triple espresso. Please let me help pay for the dry cleaning, I said, horrified at my clumsiness. As you can see, it's got it's gotten a lot more specific with the prompt I gave it. It's it's gone and done things I I you know, I did not put in the prompt, you know, asking to help pay for the dry cleaning. It's being very uh it, it's definitely in deep point of view and generally is doing a lot better. And so, I can't believe I'm saying this. But I actually think Claude might be a better writing app compared to ChatGPT. When I started this channel, I was all about ChatGPT. Like it was the only thing that you really need. In fact, one of my earliest videos was all about um, how uh, of all the different tools out there that you can use to write fiction, ChatGPT was 
in my opinion at the time, the best. Well, since then, Pseudorite has come out with uh, their new story engine. Uh, uh, it's still in beta, but uh, it's come out to some of us. And that blew my mind. And then Claude comes out here and is doing really well, specifically for fiction. I don't know anything about the technical background of Claude. I don't know if it was just trained better on the on the fiction data or, or what. But it's phenomenal at fiction. I, you know, I would say ChatGPT is still really good. Uh, and if that's what you have and that's what you use, then more power to you. But really, this, this has been pretty incredible uh, for what we get here. And so if I had to pick one tool currently today, uh, it would probably be Claude, especially because it's free right now. And so you don't have to worry about all of that uh, extra, uh, all of those extra issues with paying for ChatGPT Plus, uh, because the only way you get even close to this is using ChatGPT 4. If you're using 3.5, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't even light a candle to GPT-4, uh, not to mention Claude. So go ahead, look up Claude. I, I recommend checking it out. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Um, and again, it's free. So I would check that out. Give it a try. See how it works for you. And happy writing.